Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be walking you through the second of the CAM creation for activity 4.5 and IED. This one will be all about the pair CAM. In the last video we used parametric equations and Fusion 360 to create the eccentric CAM. And so you can go watch the first video if you need to catch up on that or if you need an explanation of what um, parametric equations are. This video will move a little bit faster because I've already walked through some of the explanation. So the part that we're getting ready to create is right here. This is off the drawing sheet. Um, and I went through and I got rid of some of these things. Sorry, I should be uh, cleaning this up before I start videos. But what we're going to do is we're going to work with the pair cam that's over here. Okay, so you can see here that everything is based again off the nominal diameter of the cam. That's right over here, D. Okay, and so we have an arc that starts here and comes around. The radius of that arc is one quarter of the diameter. We have an arc that starts here and goes all the way around. The radius of that arc is one half of the nominal diameter. The distance from the center point of this arc to the center point of the top arc would be one half of the nominal diameter. And then we have two more dimensions. We have a hole for an axle that's 3 16th of an inch in diameter, and we have thickness of 3 16th of an inch for the cam. The main thing I want to point out then, we have five dimensions that we're going to enter into our parametric table. And the other thing to point out is really just this. Note that we are working with a radius on the top and a radius on the bottom we have a diameter here, okay, before we go any further. So here we go. Let's go create this. I'm going to come in, make sure that you're in your 4.5 folder, and we have a new file ready to go. I'm going to click Sketch. I'm going to choose the same plane that I chose last time. I'm going to click C. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to hit C for circle. We're not ready to draw anything yet until we go to Modify and set up our parametric table. Once we get this, we're going to click on the plus sign and start adding in. Um, uh, parameters. Okay, so the first thing we have is DIA that's going to represent our nominal diameter, and we have to enter in something for it. So let's just start off like we did last time with one inch. Okay, we're just making it up. We're going to be able to adjust it later on. This is the nominal diameter. Everything is going to be based off of this. So let's click plus and let's add in a name like arc large. How about that? Okay, arc large. And what this is going to be then, if we go back to this, the large arc had a radius that was one half of the nominal diameter right here. Okay, So I'm going to type in one half times DIA. And that evaluates it automatically as 0.5 because the nominal diameter was one. It knows that. Okay, So we're going to say this is the radius of the large arc. We're going to go click plus. And we're going to have arc small. And... This is going to be then, according to the drawing sheet, one quarter of the nominal diameter. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to type in one fourth times DIA. It automatically knows that that's supposed to be 0.25 because the diameter is one. Then we can type in as a comment radius of the small arc. We have a couple more left to do. We have, um, let's see, what do we want to call this? We don't really have a name for it, so let's just say um, distance between arcs is what we're really doing, okay? Let's call it center to center, C to C, okay? C to C, center to center. And the dimension for this is going to be one half of the nominal diameter. So I'm going to type in one half times DIA. And I'm going to say distance between arc center points is my comment. So you can see here, C to C might be a little bit weird for a name, but if I have a comment for it, I kind of understand what I'm doing. Okay, We have two more parameters to enter in. We have the hole for the axle. In this case, it's always 3 16 of an inch. And we have thickness. We're going to name that thick. The expression is going to be 3 16 of an inch. And it's the cam thickness. When you are done, you should have something that looks exactly like this. If you need to go back and rewind, you can. You can pause at any point in time, of course, going forward as well. Click OK. Now I'm ready to go and draw. I'm going to hit C. I'm going to draw a circle. One of the problems with Fusion 360 is that right now this is the diameter, and I really need a radius. Okay, So this is going to be the large arc. I can't really go. And in Inventor, you used to be able to right-click and choose that you wanted a, a radius instead. Okay, For Fusion 360, all we're going to do is we're going to click 
That's it. I didn't die. I didn't dimension it at all. But now that it's done, I can hit, hit the letter D. I can click on the circle, come out here, and I can right click. And I can choose between a radius and a diameter dimension. After the circle has been created and you hit D to dimension, then you're allowed this opportunity. So I'm going to click radius instead. And I'll come over here. And I'm going to type in arc L. There it is right there, arc large. It knows. I'm going to enter a couple of times. And now we see that we have an arc. And the radius of that arc is 0.5. Okay. We're going to come over here. I'm going to hit C. I'm going to come up here. I'm just going to drag straight upward. I'm going to draw, click on the circle. Hit D to dimension. Right click to choose a radius dimension instead. Click and just type in arc S for small. There we go. You know, I... It's kind of silly I used arc and spelled out the word large, but I didn't spell out the word small. Maybe you want to spell out the word small there, okay? Now, the next thing I need to do is I'm going to have a line that connects them. Actually, I don't even need that. I'm just going to hit dimension. I'm going to hit D for dimension. I'm going to click on the center point of the first, the center point of the second, and come off to the side. And if you remember, this is C to C. That's what I just had. I'm going to hit enter, and you'll notice that it brings those two things in together, right? Now, the last thing that we need, this looks kind of silly, but the last thing that we need now is we need to go through and we need to connect the outsides with lines. So I'm going to hit L. I'm just going to draw a line all kind of willy-nilly over the side. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to hit L. I'm going to draw a line all willy-nilly to the side over here. Right click and choose OK. Now I need to go through and I need to add constraints. And in this case, we're going to use what's called the tangent constraint. The tangent constraint, as the picture kind of dictates there, it's going to make a line touch a circle at an edge. Okay, So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to say this line needs to touch this circle. This line needs to touch this circle. Now you'll notice it moved the circle on me. I thought maybe that was going to be locked in, but no matter what happens, at least the line moves with it, you see. So let's go through before we go any farther, and let's go use the horizontal vertical constraint. I'm going to say this point and this point need to be lined up vertically. Now I can right click and choose OK. You'll notice now they turn black because now they're no longer allowed to move. So I need to go back to the tangent constraint, make this line line up on the circle and line up on this circle. Right click OK. We're almost done here. I'm going to hit T to trim off some of the excess. Notice a pair of scissors pulls up. Click, 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 click. You have an eccentric cam. The only thing that I'm missing at this point in time is the circle for the hole. So I'm going to come over here and hit C for circle. Click on the center point. And the dimension of this one is easy. It's just hole. Stop the sketch, come over here to extrude. E to extrude. There are lots of profiles here, so I'm going to start by just clicking multiple times. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to extrude backwards. And the distance that I want to extrude is negative because it's backwards, but instead of a number, I'm going to type in the word thick. Hit enter, and you now have a pair cam. And again, the wonderful thing about this is if I go over here and I change my parameters and I say that, oh, I have a larger box for my automata project, I can have a two inch diameter here. Everything scales with it. One number changes in everything except for the size of this hole because the axle is the same size, right? And the thickness is the same. Everything else is based off of that. That's pretty awesome. So let's go back. One last thing. Optional, but it's fun to do. Click A for appearance. We chose red for the eccentric cam. Let's go green, glossy green, and we have a green pair cam. Congratulations, you finished the second of four videos.